Most movies portray the business guy as the bad guy. He's a, usually a greedy white guy who's willing to sell his mother and his children to make an extra million. But in fact, a lot of entrepreneurs wait years to make their fortune, plowing their profits right back into their companies because they care a lot about their businesses, their employees, and their dreams. But is it fair to liken an entrepreneur's passion to a religious calling? If anyone should know, Father Robert Sirico should. He's president and founder of the Acton Institute, which has produced a new documentary called The Call of the Entrepreneur. And we welcome Father Sirico. Great to see you again. Thanks for coming in. Good to in. see you. Happy New Year, Dave. Happy New Year to you. Now, I understand how wonderful an entrepreneur's role in society can be, creating something that didn't exist before. <clears throat> but you liken it to a vocation, to almost a religious calling. Why? Well, God's first action is to create from nothing he creates. And then he says to man and woman in the book of Genesis, multiply, fill the earth, have dominion. So this is a calling. I'm not saying that a person who is an entrepreneur is automatically a saint. What I'm saying is the fact that you have these talents obligates you to be successful and to be generous and to be productive with those talents. Now, the film focuses on individuals. This isn't just theory. You, you go out and you find right. individuals, and I guess there are a lot of individuals to find. The definition no. of an entrepreneur is not necessarily one who's made millions of dollars doing what they're doing, because a lot of them no. uh, haven't made the money yet. They're, they're out no. there trying and trying, and, and very often they don't. They're in our neighborhoods, they're down the street, they, they have a little shop. Uh, in New York, you have them all over the Korean grocery stores, you have the uh, various cleaners and different things like that. You focus on one in your, in your film, a guy named Brad Morgan, who's a, a dairy yes. farmer who had an interesting idea. Talk <laughs> about creating something out of nothing. What did he create something out of? out of manure. Uh, can you imagine <laughs> making money out of something that's very unpleasant? How did he do it? Right here, in well, he had a very high-grade manure. He, he went through a whole process, and he describes it in the film, uh, where he, he perfects uh, the art of manure making. <laughs> he has a great line in there. He said, you put your butt in a corner, and you'd be surprised at what you can achieve. He, in other words, when you're totally on your own with your idea and right. all of your God-given talents, you're not relying on support from a boss, or certainly That's not right. the government, just yourself, you can achieve... I guess miracles is not too strong a word, right? Incredible things to employ the people, to, to offer products that are useful to people in their own work and in their own lives. An incredible thing. He's a, a wonderful man, a great example of this kind of entrepreneurship we're talking about. And a guy that everybody can identify with. Okay, Frank yes. Hanna. Describe uh, his role in this. Well, Frank really uh, carries the burden of describing and explicating some of the most difficult uh, economic stuff. The, the whole thing about banking, insurance, the uh, really right up against the whole stereotype of that movie Wall Street, because this is a real man who, who in, is involved in banking. So in other words, all the folks on Wall Street are not uh, Gecko or whatever his name was. Uh, absolutely not. Uh, that you actually do produce a service in, in banking. Gordon Gecko, my, my executive producer, who is a Gordon Gecko, by the way, told me who he was. <laughs> but the point, what you're trying to do is, is create an image, and I'm just wondering if maybe as wrong as the Hollywood image of all entrepreneurs yeah. being bad, maybe your image is a little too on the positive side. Is that a possibility? Well, no, I think what we're trying to do is intentionally balance the image because the, the preponderance of the image of the uh, entrepreneur is negative. And we're trying to show people not just to um, expound uh, on their virtues, but to call other people to emulate that kind of model and to give people a language. You know, we, we have to have confidence in the free market economy if it's going to be stable and productive. And the moral confidence factor is a very important part of that, I think. One final person, entrepreneur, that we got to talk about is Jimmy Lai. Yeah. Describe uh, who he is and what he's done. If Frank Hanna is kind of the brains of this, then uh, Jimmy Lai is the heart of it. A man who grew up in mainland China, who uh, escaped at 12 years old and begins to build a business and uh, becomes enormously successful, first in retail clothing and then in uh, 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 the media. By the in way, Hong Kong and Taiwan. We, we want to just talk about one more person, and his last name is the same as yours, Tony Sirico. <laughs> <laughs> Not all people in your family had a religious calling. This is your brother. 
from yeah. from uh, you know from a from a priest to uh, a made guy. How did yeah, that well, happen? Well, he, he describes it as angels with dirty faces, if you remember that James <laughs> Cagney movie, uh, that uh, he, he went off uh, to, to, on the streets and, and I became a priest. Go figure. Well, you're both great guys and we're both <laughs> happy. You. To, you, you, we're happy to say that both of you come on Fox Business. We'd like to see you again. Father Sirico, good to see Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Best of luck God with the film. You.